Welcome to the Python in Education series for teachers and students and everyone else. Um, I'm going to talk about how to use Python as a calculator in this video. So in particular, what am I going to cover? The basic question, how can we use Python as a simple calculator? You probably have a calculator on your computer already that looks something like this and allows you to do simple calculations. Now, what can Python do to improve upon that situation? That's what we want to look at. Python has a lot of advantages, actually. One of them is you can see better exactly what you're doing, and I'll illustrate what I mean by that. Notice in a basic calculator, every time you type a number or something, everything you did before that disappears. Python allows you to see exactly what you're doing. You can also edit using the arrow keys. You can go back and make changes and try different things while you see what you're doing, so it's quite nice. Python also has many special functions, meaning things like trigonometric functions and so forth. So effectively, Python is a scientific calculator. It also allows you to define variables and, and equations, essentially, so that you can um, explore different equations and store variables and not have to type them in again. Uh, it's very powerful in that sense. I'll show you exactly how to do that. One of the really neat things it, that Python allows you to do is to define new functions. So if you have to do the same thing over and over again, and you have a specific, say, polynomial that you need to evaluate for a math class or something, you can just define that as a function using something called lambda, and I'll show you how to do that later in the video, really nicely and, and easily. It also allows you to do all of the mathematical operations that you normally do using complex numbers, and I'll show you how to do that as well. It also extends to a full-color graphing scientific calculator. It's a gateway to real programming and so forth, but I'll talk about those in later videos and not so much in this video. Okay, so let's get to work. Okay, so let's start with a Python interpreter. Python is an interpreted language, and that is why it's so easy to use as a calculator. You don't need to compile things to, to run them. It just You just get instant response. That's what we're gonna use is the Python in interpreter. And what that means is you don't even really need to know that Python is a programming language. It's just like a little tool that you can use for doing um, calculations. So let's imagine we're gonna do that first in a terminal window. So I go in a terminal window, I type Python, and Python just comes up, and I can immediately just start typing things, and it gives me the answer. Python is essentially automatically a calculator. You can type long lists, you can do addition, you can do subtraction. Notice you can see what you're doing here and you can see the result. You can see all your previous work that you've done. You can also group things um, with parentheses. You can use multiple parentheses if you need to. Now, Python does have one weird thing. If you divide integers, you only get an integer back. So that one little oddity, just be sure if you want to get a float or a real number to put a decimal place there. The newer version of Python, Python 3, doesn't have that. So you might want to check just to see if your version does that. But as you can see, it's great. You can see what you're doing. You can use parentheses. Um, it's really simple to use. I, in fact, I almost always have a window like this up on my machine so that if I need to do a simple calculation, I just open the window, do a simple calculation, get the answer. It's really great. Now, if you don't like to use um, a terminal window like this, but you're going to use an IDE like IDLE, which I talked about in the previous video, um, it looks very similar. So if you go into IDLE, call up IDLE like this, you will go into an interpreter there as well that you can always tell you're in the interpreter because you have these um, three greater than signs and so again same thing as being in the terminal window if you're using idle this way the only difference is it's a little bit more colorful and so forth and then if you wanted to switch over and open a file and save some of your your things for later you, you could do that but essentially a terminal window and idle for doing simple calculations is um, as easy as that okay so now one of the nice things is you can edit with the arrows so you can type something in and if you make a mistake you can see that you made a mistake and you can quickly edit it or if you want to try different variations you can do that so let's try that 
So suppose I type 2 times pi, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do up arrow and hit return, and I get the same line again. I can use the arrows then to change it to 3 pi. Go up, hit return. Now I'm going to take that 3 times out, and let me go to the end of the line and do, say, divided by 2. Okay, I can do up arrow, hit return. So in a matter of seconds, I've looked at 2 pi, 3 pi, pi over 2, and pi over 4, and I can see the answers simply by typing in once and using the arrows to quickly edit the previous line. So you can do things very quickly. If you do that, this, this here was done in idle. Um, if you do that in a terminal window, it's slightly different. You don't need to go up and then hit return and then edit. You hit up arrow and it simply gives you the previous line automatically. So let me show you how that works. 4 plus 8, 12. See, I do up arrow. It just instantly gives me the previous line and I can edit it very quickly. So one of the nice things about using the Python interpreter is this ability to see what you're doing and use the arrow so that you can edit things um, very easily. Okay. So now let's talk about how we can do math with this. That's with simple arithmetic. Very useful, actually. Um, but what if we want to do some more math? Now, one of the things about Python is it's, in a sense, a very small language on purpose. Um, but all the capabilities that you might want are out there. You just need to import them into the language. So often, the first thing you'll do when you use Python is you'll import something that you need. Now, to do that simple arithmetic, we didn't need to do that. But if we want to use the full math capabilities, we are going to want to import that capability. So how does that work? So what we do is once we're in Python, we're going to simply type from math, that's the libraries or modules that contain all the math capabilities, import star. And we say that because we want to import that. And the star means import everything. And you could import just the part that you want. But for now, just imagine you're going to import everything that you need. And it's going to have access to all of these functions and more um, to, to, to be used in Python. So let's see how that works. So I type Python to get into Python. I'm in the interpreter now. And I type this command from math import star. Okay, now all the math capabilities are there. So let me check it out. Exponential of 2.9. There it is. Use the up arrow, put a minus sign there. Okay, e to the minus 2.9. I can do log, and if I just do log, that's the natural log, but I can also do logarithms in any base by putting a comma, base 10 log. I can edit that and do a base 2 log. I can do any base that I want. Of course, other simple functions like square root, of course it does that, and so you can try different square roots if you like. Um, it also does um, all of the trigonometric functions. It even knows what pi is. also knows how to convert radians into degrees. So it's got a huge math capability just sitting there. You just simply need to type this one line to import it. Okay, so now let's try to use Python to use variables. So what does that mean? What we're going to do is we're going to Imagine there's some value of something that we're going to use over and over, and you don't want to keep typing it in. So Python allows you to do that. Let's get into Python. Now we're into the interpreter. And let's type a equals 5, and then type a. So what it did is it stored a in 5. And now I can use that over and over again. I can define other variables here like b, and then I can add a to b, for example. So it's a really great way if there's something that you don't want to type in over and over again try defining it as a variable. Now here I'm going to do it in terms of a couple of variables and I'm going to define actually an equation v in terms of the variable v naught and a and I'm going to multiply that by some number and then type v to get the answer. And so you can see I can use multiple variables and then I can use the arrow keys to go up and change that point 0.1 to point 0.2 if I want and um, go from there. So variables are a very powerful aspect of using Python as a calculator, especially when you have it visual like this and you just see it in front of you. So you see the equation and you see what's happening. Okay, now let's move on to defining our own new functions. And this uses something in Python called Lambda. 
very nice feature. So suppose you have a function that you want to evaluate over and over again. Like sometimes in a homework problem, you have a trigonometric function or a polynomial, and you need to generate several values of that particular function um, for, for some particular problem you're doing. So what you do is, in Python, is you use this, this command called lambda that allows you to define a function in terms of a variable and define what that function is in one line and then you can use it over and over after that. So let's imagine that we're going to do this particular um, polynomial just to get started. So we type f as our function, lambda, in terms of x and now we type in our polynomial. Star star means raised to the power and then we can simply ask for any value of that function that we want. It's extremely simple. You can even define a variable and then pass that variable to the function. Now let's pull in math to show how you can use these two things in combination. So I'm going to define a new function g and now I'm going to do it in terms of the variable y just to show you that it doesn't matter what you call it and use some functions from math like sine times cosine. Now I can ask for different values of this new function g. Okay, now we've been talking about math. Um, there's also complex math, and that's pretty fun. So let's do some complex numbers. What we're going to do is we're going to also have to import that capability into Python, and we're going to use a slightly different command. We're going to use import cmath, which is slightly different from what I, I suggested before, which is from math import star. The reason we're going to do import cmath in this way is because I want to keep the math capability and the complex math capability separate. And that's one of the neat things that Python allows you to do. And you'll see in this example how I use that. But what it does is it allows you to keep track of what you're doing. And so if you're going to do complex numbers, you have to tell Python using this that I'm using complex math to do this specific function. It's actually really great to keep track um, in your mind of what you're doing. So if you want to access all of these different functions using, com using complex numbers, you want to put cmath in front of the function. So instead of just saying exponential, you're going to type cmath dot. And that tells Python that you're going to be giving it a complex number and you expect it to return a complex number. And that's nice to uh, keep track of what you're doing. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you how, how that works and then I'll combine it with the normal math to show how you can use those. Now one of the things that, that Python does um, is it uses the letter j to be the square root of minus 1. And so that could be a little bit confusing because when you learn about complex numbers usually you call that i. Um, unless you're an electrical engineering student who also always use J, um, just keep track that I and J are, are, are the same thing. So okay, let's see how this works. And what we're going to do is we're going to illustrate all of that, and then we're going to prove Euler's formulas, which relate exponentials to sines and cosines. So once we figure out how to do this, we will test to see how that works. So let's get started. So I'm here in Python, and just reminding myself with a comment, that's what this is, it's a comment, um, that it uses j instead of i. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to import cmath, and that's a comment afterwards just to remind myself why I'm doing that. So the complex number functionality is now in Python. Now I can use all of these functions that, that, that manipulate complex numbers. I'm also importing math while I'm at it. So cn, a complex number, 1 plus 2j and I see what it is, 1 plus 2j. So sure enough, I can get the real part by typing dot real. I can get the imaginary part by typing dot imag. I can also define a complex number by using the command complex and put in the real and the imaginary part, and there it is, minus 1, minus 1j. I can take that complex number and multiply by another one and see what the answer is. I can multiply my two complex numbers together. And, and I'll get a new complex number. So a few things you have to learn here. Here I'm giving a complex number to the exponential, and I get the answer back. 
So now that I have all this set up, let me see if I can prove that Python knows how to do these Euler formulas. So I'm going to take e to the 2j, which is like e to the 2i, and I'm going to subtract the right-hand side of the equation over here. I'm going to subtract this. And if, if, in fact, they're equal, I should get 0, which is exactly what I get. So the Euler formula works, and Python knows how to do complex functions. Let's test the other one. Let's do sine of 3, which is 0 0.141. Now let's do the right-hand side, which is complex math, e to the 3j minus e to the minus 3j. I'm going to divide by 2 i or 2j and I forgot the parentheses but that's no problem because I can edit with the arrow keys and then I go back over here and do divided by 2j and I see that I get exactly what I should have got which then proves that this formula is also correct. So a great capability in Python for doing complex numbers and all of the mathematical functions you can use for complex numbers just like you can with normal real numbers. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video, it was a very short video, showing you how to use Python as a calculator, which is this video in the series. And so if you haven't watched the introduction, you might want to go watch that. It talks about the motivation for this educational series and how to set Python up if you haven't done that yet. Um, that makes this video actually um, a lot easier to use. And then if you want, click on any of the other boxes to go to some of the other videos in this series. The most obvious one to go to now, if since you know how to use Python as a simple calculator, is then to start using it as a graphing calculator. So that's the most obvious next one to use. And then from there, you can go learn how to make lots of great graphs that you can then quickly export. And all of the codes from all of these videos are available if you look in the description below at the New Planet School Google Drive. Now this particular video didn't have any scripts that make graphs and so forth, so there aren't any from this video, but all of the other videos have some and you can find everything you need there so you don't need to type all of this stuff in. Okay, thank you for watching. See you soon.